Okay, so we're going to look at another central limit theorem example. It says wait times for the bus are uniformly distributed between 2 and 10 minutes. So this example is slightly different because now our original random variable is not normally distributed. The original random variable is uniformly distributed. Um, so we want to find the probability that a randomly selected individual waits less than five minutes. So when it says an individual, that's going to be using the original um, random variable. So again, find the probability a random individual waits less than five minutes. So I want to look at the fact that x has a uniform distribution between 2 and 10. So I've set up my uniform distribution um, between 2 and 10. And I want to look at the probability that x is less than 5. So I have a rectangle, 2, 3, 4, 5 is here. Shade the area to the left. Probably that x is less than 5 is 3 over 8, because there's 8 total units there, or 0 0.375. So again, with the uniform distribution, we have the rectangular continuous distribution, and probably x is less than 5. The width is 3, the height is 1 8. So 3 eighths or 0 0.375. Part B is asking for the mean and the standard deviation of the individual wait times. And the mean is always found um, for a uniform distribution. The mean is the average of the start and the stop values. So it's A plus B over 2, or yeah, it's 2 plus 10, by the way, 2, 6 minutes. The standard deviation, sigma, is given by the formula, the square root of b minus a squared divided by 12. So in this case, that's the square root of 8 squared, because 10 minus 2 is 8, over 12, or the square root of 64 over 12. Um, when I do my computations in, in Excel, I will probably leave that as the square root of 64 over 12. But to get an idea, when I draw when I draw my, my picture for the next part, I want to estimate that, and that's approximately 2.3. And again, it's 2.3 minutes. So both the mean and the standard deviation have the same units as our random variable x. The mean is 6 minutes, and the standard deviation is approximately 2.3 minutes. For part c, it's asking If a bus has 36 people on board, what is the probability that their mean wait time is less than five minutes? So here we have 36 people. It's no longer an individual. And we're asking about the probability of their mean wait time, not just one person's wait time, but the average wait time for all 36 of these people. And that's what tells us we need to use the central limit theorem. So with that central limit theorem, we have n is 36. And the central limit theorem tells us that the distribution of x bar will be normal. So even though our original distribution was uniform, uh, because n is bigger than 30, we can use the central limit theorem. And that'll tell us that the new distribution of the sample means is normal with a, the same mean, 6, and a standard deviation of, well, it's technically the square root of 64 over 12 divided by the square root of 36. But just to make it a little easier to see, that's I'm going to approximate it was 2.3 divided by the square root of 36. And I also chose 36 so that I could square root that and get 6. So when we set up our picture, um, you know, it's helpful to know about how big 2.3 divided by the square root of 36 is. So I'll just maybe I'll just do that here. 
2.3 divided by 6. That's about 0 0.4, 0 0.38. So in my picture, 6 is in the middle. Again, this is a normal curve I've drawn. 6 is my mean, and each tick mark represents uh, 0.38, or about 0.4. So 5 is one unit away, so this, if that's 0 0.4, there's another 0.4, that would be 0 0.8, and then about halfway in between would be 5, or a little less than halfway. So 5 would be about here. And I'm looking for the probability that the mean wait time is less than 5 minutes. So the probability that x bar is less than 5. And in the picture, that's going to be everything to the left of five. So then I go to five, I draw up, and then shade the stuff to the left. And again, since that's an area on the left, Excel can find that for us. Using normal distribution, x is five, the mean is six. For the standard deviation, I actually want to type in the exact value. So I'm typing in the square root of 64 over 12, that's the numerator, and I'm dividing it by the square root of 36. So technically, this would be square root, again, of 36. Um, I did that by hand, saying it was 6. So either one of those methods would work. And then true for the cumulative value, and that's a very small 0 0.0047. And then to recap this problem, What's different again here is that we had a uniformly distributed distribution as opposed to a normally distri distributed distribution to begin with. So we had to go back and look up how we found uniform distribution probabilities. So that's always the resulting area. So <clears throat> because the areas are rectangular, it's always the width times the height. So the probability that x is less than 5, a width of 3 and a height of 1 eighth, 3 eighths. Um, I'm going to need the mean and the standard deviation in order to apply the central limit theorem for part C. So part B is here so that we can find these, this mean and this standard deviation. So the mean for a uniform distribution is the average of the start and stop values, in this case, six minutes. And the standard deviation for a uniform distribution is B minus A squared divided by 12, all under the square root, which in this case is approximately 2.3. So again, the approximation is used so that I, when I divide by the square root of 36, square root of n downstairs, I know that value is about 3.38 or 0.4, and that helps me draw the picture. But when I use Excel, I actually want to plug in those values rather than the approximations so that we're only approximating at the very end when I round off this guy to four decimal places. Uh, in the third part, when we're using the central limit theorem, we notice it has uh, 36 people, and that we're looking for the probability of their mean wait time, not the individual wait time, but their mean wait time. So n is 36, using the central limit theorem to get essentially the same, well, a new type of distribution now, a normal distribution with a mean of 6 and a new standard deviation, the original standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Let me plug that into Excel, draw the picture, and we have the results. Okay, but in most cases when we deal with central limit theorem, it's gonna be like uh, the other example where both the original and the new distribution are normally distributed. And so what happens there is um, the standard deviation decreases a lot. So our original picture has a very, really, a really big spread between the three different, three standard deviations on the left, three standard deviations on the right. And then when you use the central limit theorem, that spread, the total distance from three standard deviations away is much less. So um, everything gets basically closer to the mean. And that's what the central limit theorem is essentially telling us. All right, end this one and go from there.